गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू टुडे द टॉपिक ऑफ द क्लास इज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ डायफ्राम डायफ्राम इज अ मस्कुलो टेंडिनस स्ट्रक्चर विच सेपरेट द थोरेसिक कैविटी फ्रॉम द एबडामिनल कैविटी इन दिस डायग्राम यू कैन सी द इन्फीरियर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द डायफ्राम इन दिस यू कैन सी द सेंट्रल टेंडन ऑफ द डायफ्राम इन विच देर इज इन्फीरियर वेर एन केवल ओपनिंग this is the muscular part of the diaphragm and in which the esophageal opening of the diaphragm and the third one this one is the aortic opening of the diaphragm when a cable opening is present at the level of t8 esophageal opening is present at the level of t10 and aortic opening of the diaphragm is present at the level of t12 and here you can see the two cruras now coming to the development of diaphragm it is mesodermal in origin and it develops from the four embryonic components and it uh, there is important role of long arm of chromosome 15 which has genes which has role in development of diaphragm now the four components which are responsible for development of diaphragm first one is the septum transversum this is septum transversum the second one is the pleuroperitoneal membrane the pinkish structure and the third one is the dorsal mesentery of the esophagus this is the dorsal mesentery of esophagus this is esophag esophageal opening and anterior to it this is vena cava opening and posterior to it this is aortic opening so behind the esophageal opening here the this part is dorsal mesentery of the esophagus and uh, fourth component is muscular ingrowth from the body wall or you can say mesoderm of the body wall which is responsible for the these four component which are responsible for development of the diaphragm now uh, these is struck which part of the diaphragm uh, uh, is developing from the structure first one is the central tendon of the diaphragm that is developing from the septum transversum this is the central tendon which is developing from septum transversum and the second is small peripheral part of the diaphragm which develops from the pleuroperitoneal membrane crura of the diaphragm develops from the dorsal mesentery of the esophagus and large peripheral part of the diaphragm develops from mesoderm of the body wall now first component that is septum transversum it forms the central tendon of the diaphragm and it's composed of mesodermal tissue it is made up of unsplit part of the intraembryonic mesoderm means intraembryonic coelom is not extending into it and uh, it develops during third to fourth week of intrauterine life and it lies at the level of c345 level so it is it will be supplied by c345 phrenic nerve and in the cranial part if from the cranial part of the septum transversum diaphragm central tendon of the diaphragm develops and in the caudal part of septum transversum liver develops into it and here you can see the septum transversum which is growing from the anterolateral body wall this is body wall and this is the anterolateral part of the body wall and from which this septum transversum is developing and uh, this uh, septum transversum is uh, posteriorly it is uh, there is location uh, pleuroperitoneal canal is present posterior to the septum transversum so it is uh, posterior to septum transversum is pleuroperitoneal canal and posterior lateral to it is the pleuroperitoneal membrane or the pleuroperitoneal fold and this septum transversum separates the developing liver from the developing heart but it is not a complete septum to separate the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity because at this time this uh, uh, thoracic and abdominal cavities are uh, continuous with each other by a canal that is called as pleuroperitoneal canal this is pleuroperitoneal canal and through which abdominal and peritoneal cavities are communicated with each other this septum transversum is present here and you can see 
this is septum bluish structure is the septum transversum this one and it is forming the central part of the diaphragm or the central tendon of the diaphragm here you can see the pleuroperitoneal canal on the sides this is pleuroperitoneal canal now the pleuroperitoneal canal fuses uh, it obliterates by uh, by pleuroperitoneal fold pleuroperitoneal fold moves this is the pleuroperitoneal fold pink one is the pleuroperitoneal fold and it will move towards the septum transversum and it there will be obliteration of the pleuroperitoneal canal like this this is pleuroperitoneal membrane it will move towards the mesentery of the esophagus and towards septum transversum so this gap will be filled by pleuroperitoneal membrane so this pleuroperitoneal canal will be obliterated by uh, by filling of pleuroperitoneal membrane and if this gap is not filled or uh, we can say if there is defect in fusion of the pleuroperitoneal membrane with septum transversum or dorsal mesentery of esophagus then it will lead to formation of a foramen or defect in the di uh, diaphragm that is called as foramen of Bogdalek or lead to congenital diaphragmatic hernia and this pleuroperitoneal canal is larger on the left side as compared to the right side and the second re uh, thing is that on the uh, right side this pleuroperitoneal canal obliter obliterates earlier as compared to left side so there are chances of hernia is more uh, on the left side because the pleuroperitoneal canal is larger and it will fill uh, filled later than the right side so congenital diaphragmatic hernia or bogdalek hernia that is pleuroperitoneal hernia is more common on the left side as compared to the right side now coming to the second component that is pleuroperitoneal membrane pleuroperitoneal membrane this pinkish structure is the pleuroperitoneal membrane it is and it is forming the small peripheral part of the diaphragm in adults or at birth but uh, during early fetal life it is forming the major part of the peripheral part of the diaphragm here uh, you can see uh, the first diagram in which uh, pleuroperitoneal canal is there and it will be filled by pleuroperitoneal membrane and in the second diagram you can see major component of the diaphragm is formed by the first one is the septum transversum and the second peripheral uh, part posterior lateral part is formed by the pleuroperitoneal membrane this dark pink structure is the pleuroperitoneal membrane and this is septum transversum and this is the dorsal mesentery of the esophagus so this pleuroperitoneal membrane is forming a large part during early fetal life but a only a small portion of the diaphragm in the newborn because this peripheral part of the diaphragm will be replaced by mesentery uh, replaced by the mesoderm of the body wall now coming to the third component that is dorsal mesentery of the esophagus and it forms the median component or the median part of the diaphragm you can see in this diagram this is dorsal mesentery of the esophagus and it is forming the central part or the median part of the diaphragm and uh, the cruras you can see the crura right left crust of the diaphragm they are formed by this dorsal mesentery of the esophagus here you can see the esophagus this yellow one this one and posterior or dorsal to it is the dorsal mesentery of the esophagus which is forming the crura of the diaphragm so we can say central tendon of the diaphragm is formed by septum transversum crura of the diaphragm is formed by dorsal mesentery of the esophagus central uh, and peripheral part a small peripheral part of the diaphragm is formed by pleuroperitoneal membrane and uh, large peripheral part of the diaphragm is formed by mesoderm of the body wall here in this diagram you can see the mesoderm of the body wall this purple one is the muscular ingrowth from the body wall or you can say mesoderm of the body wall and uh, initially during early fetal life it is forming the smaller part of the diaphragm 
small peripheral part of the diaphragm is formed by this mesoderm of the body wall but as the baby grow this part will uh, this will replace the pleuroperitoneal membrane so major part of the peripheral part of the diaphragm is formed by this mesoderm of the body wall in this diagram you can see this is the early fetal life in the in this you can see the septum transversum and on both side pleural and peritoneal cavities are connected by pleuroperitoneal canal in the second uh, diagram you can see as the baby grow this pleuroperitoneal canal has been replaced by pleuroperitoneal membrane so in this condition central part of the diaphragm is formed by septum transversum and peripheral part is formed by the pleuroperitoneal membrane but the as the baby grow then uh, this peripheral part uh, lungs and pleura will increase in size and this pleural cavity will here the pleural cavity will invade the mesoderm of the body wall and this mesoderm of the body wall will split into two layers the outer layer will contribute in formation of body wall and inner layer will contribute in formation of diaphragm here so this uh, newborn or in adult diaphragm major contribution of the central part is central tendon peripheral part a small peripheral part of the diaphragm is formed by pleuroperitoneal membrane and large peripheral part of the diaphragm is formed by the mesoderm of the body wall